scared of me or, or any of us. So uh, anyhow, we will be uh, doing communion. I'll take these napkins off and, and I'll explain this again. We do have some cups that you don't have to peel open. They are uh, pre-poured. The ladies have their masks and gloves on. And they got their uh, wine and uh, wafer. We do have, and this might be the most sanitary, the individual packs if you want to use those. And then on this side over here, we do have a few, um, what am I trying to think of, the little ones that you don't have to have the wheat in them, gluten-free ones. And so, uh, and then we have little wine cups by them as well. So, uh, I think we have plenty of all of it. So, uh, you kind of know the routine, how we do it. But, uh, and and our, is it just me, or does it seem like every day you read in the paper or the news or listen to the TV or, or internet, and it's like every other day they change their mind about how this virus spreads. And, man, it doesn't make it easy to plan church when they keep changing their minds like that. So, uh, anyhow, we, we try to stay up on it. We try to do what's safe. Uh, Technology-wise, we are recording our service. In fact, we're trying to make some improvements so that the folks online have a better experience. And so we're always working for that as well. Our order of service for this the ninth Sunday after Pentecost is printed in your bulletin, or you can just follow along on the big screen.
of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the intro. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. They asked, and he brought quail and gave them bread from the heaven in abundance. For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading from Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen diligently to me and eat what is good. Delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know. And a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty but shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up to the cypress. Instead the briar shall come up to the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Our epistle from Romans 9. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They are Israelites. To them belongs the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promise. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ who is God over all. Blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Continue with the special music.
continue with our Alleluia verse. sisters, or, or maybe you've even had a chance to play on it. And I, I think this is real neat, because with my cell phone, I can talk to people. I can keep in a, a relationship with them. But you know, this cell phone, it's not free. In fact, every month I have to pay a bunch of money just so I can use this cell phone. In our text today, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who are weary, in other words, tired, and having a, a difficult time. In fact, he talks about how come and eat food for free and drink drink for free and, and then seek the Lord while he may be found. Well, you know what he's really saying in the Bible? Jesus is saying, I want to talk to you just like you talk to people on a cell phone, but you don't need to pay for it. Jesus said, I'm going to talk to you and it's going to be free. In fact, instead of using a phone, we just fold our hands and we pray to Jesus and it doesn't cost anything. It's free. And so when we're sad, when we're having a hard day, we can pray to Jesus. And even when we're happy, 
when we're having a great day and we just want to say, yay, we can talk to Jesus. Just anytime, anywhere we are. We fold our hands and we pray and we let him know how we're doing. In fact, let's pray right now. Dear Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you that it doesn't cost any money to know you and to be with you. Thank you that you're always with us. We pray a, a word of blessings for all those around us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Take care. Bye-bye. We continue with our hymn of the day.
Christ. Amen. The text for this evening is that Isaiah 55 passage. Really, some of the most comforting words in Scripture. Come, all you who are thirsty. Come to the waters, you who have no money. Come by and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. That sounds good, doesn't it? Water, food, milk, wine, all for free. They say nothing's for free, but it is with God. He gives it to us. And even more than temporal things, seek the Lord while he may be found, while he is near. What it's saying is, come, have a relationship with Jesus the Christ. Have a real, peaceful day. And I'm talking about a peace that passes understanding, all understanding, even the angels, as Pastor Miller used to say, don't understand the angels or the peace of God. That sounds good. It sounds good to me. It sounds good to you. Why? Well, because a lot of life isn't free or easy. Much of life is hard and toilsome. In fact, we have a name for it now. We call it the year 2020. It's a hard life. And when you think about it, at least for me, you know, when I finally think I've got it all together, I forgot where I put it. It's a difficult time. In the Columbia River, that's out west, finally emptying out through Washington and Oregon, some of you have been there. There's a famous spot I read about. I've not been there. But when the water, the tides go out and it's low, there's actually fresh water that springs up there so abundantly you could take your cup or a bucket and you could get that fresh cool, free water. But then the salty tides of water come in from the Pacific Ocean and it covers up the pool. And I suppose the observer would look and say, well, it's gone. It's swallowed up. But divers have actually dove down and that, that cool, beautiful spring of fresh water is still flowing. You can still find that refreshing spot. You know, and the truth be told, for every one of us here tonight, there are times in our life when the tide comes in, when the salty rush of difficult water hits us, a tide of heartache and despair, a tide of responsibility, a rush of modern life. And we think of the unrest that we've seen this year, and of course the virus we talk so much about. Sometimes it's, it's really hard even for us Christians, to find that, that flowing, refreshing water. We know it's there. We just want to feel it and see it. We want so badly for that refreshment to be in our impoverished spirits. In fact, that's part of the reason we've gathered together tonight. But part of the reason you're watching in your homes the TV is because you want to gather that fresh, that life-giving water, the water that we can only find in God's Word and in His sacraments. Indeed, there have been times when we have felt our cup overflow, where we've known God's presence so wonderfully Maybe it was taking communion, maybe it was during a baptism, maybe it was hearing God's word read, whatever. But we know it's from God, and so we come seeking the Lord while he may be found, calling upon him when he is near. And just a clarification, and I know you know this, but it appeases my conscience to repeat this. You know it's God who seeks us out, right? It is God who comes near to us. The testimony of the New Testament is that the shepherd is coming for us. We sang about that moments ago. The shepherd is on the hillside looking for the lost sheep. 
It's not we who stand at the door of God humbly knocking. It's God who comes to us in His Word and in His sacraments. You know, it's one of the main purposes of worship. We don't come to worship to find God. He's found us. We come to worship. We do our devotions. We read our Bibles so that we might be quiet and still and hear God's Word speaking to our hearts. There's a, there's a story I read a while back about an East Coast fishing village that was nearly destitute. The town's people decided they've got to have a big meeting. They're going to resolve their financial issues and a few other problems, I guess. And there was a visitor who appeared in this town meeting and he tried to speak a little word of wisdom, but he was interrupted every time he opened his mouth. I guess the locals didn't care much to have an outsider showing up and talking. Well, a latecomer came to the meeting as the latecomer was entering the meeting. This new person was exiting. The latecomer said to the committee meeting, the group of people from town, Oh, hey! What was he doing here? Did he offer help? Is he going to aid us? Well, the other townspeople didn't know anything about this. They said, uh, what are you talking about? Who was the stranger? The latecomer replied, oh, he keeps a boat here. His name is John D. Rockefeller Sr. The people of the town ignored the one person who actually had the resources to help them. When I read that story, I thought, you know, how often do we ignore the one who can actually help us? The one who actually has the resources. And yet, isn't God faithful and patient? God still comes to us in His Word and in the sacraments. You see, God is very near to us. In fact, who do we see God most clearly in? We see Him in the person of Jesus Christ. Think about how fortunate we are that we know Jesus. Isaiah, the mighty seer, we sing, right? What a great prophet. And he wrote a lot, too, by the way. It's a really thick book. And Isaiah only had the vaguest outline, really, of God. Because he didn't have the model of Jesus Christ. He didn't have the Holy Spirit opening his eyes to see Christ. He didn't get to see the Jesus who held little children in his arms. Or the Jesus who forgave the woman who healed people. Whose feet were washed. Who healed a blind man. For as exalted as the prophet Isaiah was, and I bet he's got a neat place in heaven. He didn't get to see Jesus like you and I. See, we've got the Holy Spirit in us, opening our eyes to Christ. Dr. George Hunter, in his book, Every Tongue Confesses, tells an interesting story about a guy named Bill Anderson. Bill Anderson, from what I read, was actually kind of a prominent preacher in the 30s, but even more than that, he was a pretty gifted speaker. In fact, people would pay him lots of money to come to dinners. And after dinner, he would entertain him with his oratory skills. Well, he was, uh, as the story goes, he was hired to come and talk to the American Academy of Mathematics. Well, that had to be fun. Anyhow, he arrived uh, as is custom. You know, everybody's getting together. And uh, he went right to the head table where he was supposed to be, and he, he noticed there was another fellow there, kind of a slight graying fellow, seated next to where he was supposed to be at his table. And Alexander, the consummate extrovert, of course, goes up and says, Say, fella, you look awfully familiar. What's your name? And the man quietly replied, My name is Albert Einstein. Whoa. Alexander was shocked. In fact, he was shook. Number one, he didn't recognize probably the great 
greatest mind of his time. But suddenly he thought that those stock and trade stories and jokes that he tells at the Kiwanis clubs probably isn't going to work so well in this field of intellectual depth. He panicked and he prayed. And he says, I, I heard a voice say, tell them about me, Bill. Tell them about me. And so Alexander, through his lucrative reputation of entertaining and inspiring after dinner speaker to the wind, and when he got up to talk, he literally did. He tossed his speech aside and he just told them the gospel. He told them about Jesus Christ. He declared that Christ is the only legitimate God, the only way to heaven, the only real hope human race has. And he sat down wondering, man, I wonder if I've kind of blown it now. And he says that Albert Einstein leaned over to him and said, say, fella, I hope your side wins. If you don't, we're all doomed. Bill Alexander knew that the most clearly we see God is in the person of Jesus Christ. And so that's what he talked about. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You know, there's a lot of people in this world who don't know Jesus, isn't there? There's a lot of people that you and I know, that we talk to, that we meet. They have so insulated their lives that they don't even have to pay attention to any religion. They don't have to read God's word. And they don't have to know anything about Jesus Christ. They, they've almost erected like a barrier around their life so they don't have to be inconvenienced with the truth of Christ. You know, it's a, it's a sad thing. They're not going to hear the voice of God in their hour of need. Who's going to tell them about Jesus if they could only see God, if they only understood that he was near? It's like a story about a young man whose girlfriend lived in a distant city and, uh, and he wanted to have an engagement ring on hand because when they visited next, he was going to ask her that all-important question, right? Mexican or Italian? No. That important question about, will you marry me? And so he went to a friend of his who was a jeweler, and he said, I want a special ring. Please make this ring. And yeah, the friend said, it's going to take a little time, but I'm going to make you a nice one. And in the course of due time, he started to make the ring, and he got the diamond, and he got the gold, and he, he kind of shaped it all together, and it wasn't done. The diamond looked like a diamond, you know, needed a little polishing, but the ring... It was kind of a, well, kind of a brightish garnish color. It wasn't shiny like a gold ring on a, on a finger, right? And so uh, the, the, the young man asked his friend, he said, well, I don't mean to complain here, but uh, the ring doesn't look so good. You know, maybe uh, I was thinking a little shinier. And his, his friend said, oh, don't you worry. The gold hasn't been purified yet. It hasn't been refined. He said, it's going to look fantastic. It's going to be purified. And, and the nervous young man said, well, how will you know? How will you know when it's pure enough? To which the jeweler replied as he pierced over the crucible, when I can see my face in it. I think that's the kind of relationship Jesus wants with you and me. He wants us to have such a great relationship with our God that people see his reflection in us. Stick with that Pauline theme of purified, right? You've read about that in the epistles of being refined like gold and silver. So that people around us can see the reflection of Jesus Christ. You know, the fact is, God is with us. That's absolutely true. It was true since the day he called you in the holy waters of baptism. 
It is still true today and will be true forevermore. You see, we don't have a pie in the sky kind of faith. We don't have an insurance policy like just believe in Jesus because someday you're going to die and you want to end up on the right side. No, we have a God who is very near us right now. And we don't have to go far to find him. He has found us. And we see him most clearly in the person of Jesus Christ. And so therefore, let us do what Isaiah said. Let's keep reading our Bible. Let's keep following our devotions, our Bible studies, attending our church services, or watching them online, and being active in the work of the Lord. And tell your friends and your neighbors, tell everyone, the Lord is near. In fact, he's here. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep our hearts and minds united in Christ. Amen. Our worship service continues with the prayers of the church. I invite you to stand as you are able for the prayers. Lord, you have bid us to come without money to receive grace beyond price. Hear us as we heed your call and turn to you in prayer, confident of your promise to hear and answer us. Father, we have sought meaning, comfort, and sustenance from all the wrong places. Grant us your Holy Spirit that our hearts may be turned to your word, that we may hunger for your Son's body and blood, and that we may Discern truth from error. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we are daily blessed to know abundance and freedom. Bless those who defend us from our enemies, who serve us in government, and to protect us in our communities. Be with our president, the Congress, our governor, and our judges and magistrates, that they may discern the right path and lead us with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we suffer with all manner of ills and afflictions. Hear us and grant to us healing according to your will, strength in time of trial, and peace at the last. We pray especially for Penny Shalak, who is having migraines, that's Maddie's mom. For Devin Schrod, who's fighting cancer, that's Doug Schrod's brother, and for Doug Schrod's mom, Dorothy Schrod, who also has health issues. For Norma Kurvana, uh, who is fighting breast cancer, and for Andy Gavarna, who was in a serious car accident, for Diana Hanna, who's not doing very well at all in her fight against cancer, and for Jim Bump, who is also having a very difficult time in his fight against cancer, and for those that we name in our hearts. Good Lord, deliver us and teach us to depend upon your grace in all things. Lord, in your mercy, Father, we know that your steadfast love and mercy are forever, but our faith is daily tested and tempted. Give us strength and endurance that we may not despair, but have confidence in your sufficient grace. Guide us to seek our consolation in your word and sacraments, and prepare us to receive the Lord's body and blood in his holy communion. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we are daily and richly surrounded with your love and care. Grant us eyes to see your mercies new every morning and grateful hearts that we have received what we have received and that we may share with those in need and generously support the work of your church. Here are words of thanksgiving for Adeline and Silliman, who will be celebrating another birthday, and for Paul and Cindy Fleckenstein, who will celebrate 55 years of marriage. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we ask you to grant us all things needful and to keep from us all things harmful to us and to our salvation, for we trust your wisdom and love. Teach us to pray without fear, your will be done. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be.
be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, when he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you, for the full forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated and continue with the distribution. Now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith and a life everlasting. God's peace. We pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.
great to see everybody in church. You gotta know, Dr. Ruth was having a birthday. Is, it, is today the actual day? It is. We affectionately call Ruth Simon Dr. Ruth because Gary Tease called her that. So, uh, happy birthday, Ruth. I hope you had a great day and many more. But we, can, we can try to sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ruth. God's blessings to you. All right. Happy birthday. Hey, uh, not a lot to announce. The golf outing at St. Paul's School, and we do this as a fundraiser, uh, is this coming Sunday at 1 o'clock. If you want to play, there's still spots open. You want to join us for the meal? It's at four o'clock. I don't have the prices memorized. That's, it's a good, good cause, good food. In fact, uh, we at, at the out, uh, the outing, the golf outing, we have some uh, big goods and stuff available, and we've got them even here tonight. So we got some steaks, two for fifteen. Plus we have some pies. I don't know if there's any cakes left. That I can't remember. I know I, after eating my fourth one, I forget. <laughs> Actually, I didn't even get any, but uh, there'll be some out there. So I don't know who's selling them, but they should be out in the entryway. Uh, Mary, are you selling them? They're out there. Okay, somebody's out there. So uh, it's a good deal. Uh, those baked goods are great. That's really all the announcements I have. 